Thanks for joining me in this video. My name is Preston Palmer with Student Engineering, where my goal is to help engineering students like me better understand engineering. In this video, we're going over moments. And at the end of the video, we're going to be doing an example problem on how to solve moments. And I've got other videos that also do that, and I'll link those down in the description below. So if you find this helpful, don't forget to subscribe. So a moment is the tendency of an object to rotate about a given axis when a force is applied. And it's also known as a torque. So kind of to demonstrate that, what I have here is a board with a lag bolt in, screwed into it, and I have a wrench that fits onto that lag bolt. Well, we can say that when I put this end of the wrench onto the, lag, the head of the lag bolt, they kind of become one object because they move when it's pushed, right? So if I apply a force to this end, it's going to rotate the bolt and the wrench. Well, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a moment or a torque about an axis right here, right? Going through the middle of the bolt. So a force is being applied to this object and it's causing it to rotate. Hence, a moment is the tendency of an object to rotate about a given axis when a force is applied. So if my finger is applying a force to this wrench, it matters where along this wrench I am pushing and also which angle I am pushing at because it changes what we'll call the moment arm or the length from the axis of rotation to where the force is being applied. So if I push right here, it's going to be a lot harder to turn this wrench. Whereas if I push over here, it's going to be a lot easier. And if I was to have a longer wrench and push all the way out here, it would require very little effort. So it also matters where and how I'm pushing. So if I'm pushing right directly along the wrench into the bowl, no moment is going to be caused because the force is in line with the moment axis or if my force were continued to continue straight it will go right through the axis of that rotation so the part of the force that matters is the force that is perpendicular to the moment arm so if my finger is kind of tilted in this direction part of the component of that force is going to be perpendicular to our wrench and part of it's going to be parallel to the wrench. And the part that is parallel isn't going to cause any rotation, therefore it's not going to cause a moment. So what we're trying to find is the part of the force that is perpendicular to our moment arm. And we can write that a moment is, we'll call it M, it's the force, the magnitude of the force, times by our moment arm, the distance from the axis to the force. But this just gives us the magnitude of a moment because a moment is actually a vector, it has a direction. So we can write that moment in vector form and we can say that that equals to our moment arm in vector form. So therefore how long it is and the direction that it's going cross using the cross product our vector force so how hard it's pushing and the direction that that force is being applied so it just so happens that when I rotate this say in a counterclockwise direction the screw is going to start coming out of the board you'll be able to see that if I turned it more and if I turned it the opposite direction it would go into the board. Well, the direction of a moment is perpendicular to the plane created by our force and our moment arm. So we have a wrench and my finger are creating a plane and our moment is perpendicular to that plane or coming out 90 degrees from that plane at the axis of rotation. And so we can find that moment vector with both its direction and magnitude using this formula with the cross product of the moment arm 
and the force. And it's important to note that the moment arm is first in this cross product and the force is second. If you don't do it that way, you'll end up getting the moment in the opposite direction. So a way to remember that is by using the right hand rule where if you curl your fingers around what we the moment axis, then your thumb is pointing up. So therefore it'd be a positive moment. So your fingers curling is a counterclockwise rotation if your thumb is pointing up and you're looking down on your thumb. So counterclockwise rotation is a positive moment and a negative moment is clockwise rotation. So if my thumb was pointing down, my fingers could rotate in a counterclockwise direction. And that might seem backwards, but in science and engineering and math, a lot of times counterclockwise rotation is the positive direction. If you think of the unit circle, you start with zero degrees and then you go up to 45 and then 90 and then 135 and 180. And anyways, that's counterclockwise rotation, right? And so that's how a moment works in engineering. And a notation that we use for moments is either with an arrow curling in the direction that the moment is applied or say if we have a rod here and it is being twisted well if we drew that arrow it kind of just come like this and it wouldn't look like much of an arrow so in that case we usually would write it as a double headed straight arrow like that and both of those you could signify that there's a moment or a torque being applied to something whereas a force is usually just a straight arrow with one head. So that would be our force and this could be our moment. So let's say for some reason that my bolt had a longer head and I was able to put multiple wrenches on it and say those wrenches were different sizes. Well let's say one was causing a moment in the counterclockwise direction, another one was pulling it in the clockwise direction and say we had a third one that was also pushing in the counterclockwise direction well, we can add those moments up created by those forces and those moment arms to find our resultant moment. And that would be written as if we have an axis here, we'll call it our x and y axis, and the point of rotation is there at the origin. Well, if we have a moment arm, we'll call it d1, and we have a force, f1, Let's say we have another moment here with a shorter moment arm, we'll call it D2, and a longer moment, or a bigger force, we'll call it F2. And then we have a really long moment arm with a tiny force that is being applied also in that same direction, in the counterclockwise direction, we'll call it F3 and D3. Well what you can do to add up those moments is you do the sum of the moments equals F1 times by D1 plus and now we're gonna label this as we're gonna label this one as negative because it's going in the clockwise direction so it would end up creating a negative moment these other two are going to go in the counterclockwise direction, so they're going to create a positive moment. So F2 times by D2 plus F3 times by D3. And so you can add those up and find the resultant moment acting on that point. And now, so remember that the force times by the distance that's going to give us kind of a unique unit that we probably haven't seen before that is force times by a distance. So that could be pounds times by feet, so you get pound feet, or say this was newtons and meters, so you get newton meters. And those are the units of torque or a moment. Alright guys, I'm going to go over another situation that you might come across or you probably will come across 
Now let's say we have a funny shaped bone arm, kind of like this metal pipe that I have here. And it is rotating about this point, again on this lag bolt. And let's say there's a force being applied out here. Well, remember that the only part of the force that matters is the part that is perpendicular to our MOM arm, because the part that is parallel with it doesn't cause rotation. So, let's say we have a force going straight up into this thing, and so our component of our force that is perpendicular to our MOM arm, remember that MOM arm has to go from the axis of rotation to the force, well our MOM arm is going to come out just right here and it's going to be about this long going from the bolt to our force which would be my hand. So it's going to run, run along my hand and down into my arm and that's going to be the force. Well say if I rotated my arm and I was pushing like this, well again our MOM arm would go from our point of rotation out to per where it was perpendicular to our force. So it may, might come out to like right here. And say if my f hand was in this direction, well, perpendicular would be just right along this rod. So it would be like this. So we can either solve it for where our MoMA arm is perpendicular to our force, or what part of our force is perpendicular to our MoMA arm. So if my force is like this, and I drew a moment arm from here to here, well, the component of the force that was perpendicular to our moment arm would maybe be about like this, and our component that was parallel to it might be something, or would be something like this. So it's important to remember that the only part of our force that matters is the part that's perpendicular to our moment arm. All right guys, so here we have an example problem where we have this kind of arm thing sticking out of the wall and we have a force being applied at this end of it that is 600 pounds. So what we need to do is find the moment about this point O. And what we need to do is we need to find the length of our MOM arm. Remember that our MOM arm needs to be perpendicular to our force. And so we can see our force kind of like runs along this line right here. And so we want to find the distance from here over to here, which is where our MOM arm is going to be perpendicular to our force. So that is one way to solve it. Another way to solve it is we could solve for how long the MOM arm was from here to here, and then we could find the component of our force that was perpendicular to that line. So there's two ways to solve that. I'm going to say that the easier way might be to solve to find the length from here over to here, which would make our moment arm per per perpendicular to our force. But you can choose either way, and sometimes, on, depending on the situation, one way might be easier than the other. So, what we need to do is we need to solve for the geometry of the shape and find the distance from here over to wherever our force would be perpendicular to our moment arm. So, to start out, we can kind of see we have a triangle here, and with our hypotenuse length being three feet. And we know our angle here is 45 degrees. Well, because this side and this side are parallel, we also know that this angle is 45 degrees. So we'll just get rid of that. And we know that this side is three feet. Well, we want this side of our triangle so that we can find out how far this is over from this point. So we can do the cosine of 45 degrees is equal to this side we'll call x divided by 3. We'll multiply the 3 over and then we get the, the 3 the cosine of 45, if you remember from the unit circle, is square root of 2 over 2. So we'll multiply that by 3. It's 3 square root of 2 over 2 equals x. And that approximately equals 2.2, or 2.12. And so we know that this force is 1 foot over along this triangle. So we're going to subtract 1 from this, so we'll do minus 1. And that's going to equal 1.12.
And then from this point over to this point, we know we have four foot, so we're gonna add four foot to that, so we're gonna get that that equals 5.12 feet. And that is the length of our moment arm. So now what we need to do is we need to multiply the, dis the length of our moment arm by our force. And that will give us the magnitude of our moment. So our moment, or the magnitude of our moment equals 600 times by 5.12, and that equals 3,000 75 and remember the moments or the moment its units are pounds times by feet so we're going to get 3075 pound feet and so that might kind of seem like a weird unit to you but that's just the units for moments or torque all right guys if you have any questions or suggestions leave them down in the comments below so i can improve future videos if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.